Greetings, fellow nerds. Welcome to another empty junior fall video where we are doing some strict haven preparation. We're looking at cards, decks, synergies, tribal decks that we think are going to get better as we see more strict haven uh, spoilers and new cards to use, all that fun stuff. So, if you want to see more stuff like that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so you have an easier time finding me in the future. Um, and I know that I think some about 50% of you aren't subscribed, so it really helped me out. And you can also participate in Fan Submission Fridays, where you drop an Aether Hub link down below about a deck you want me to play. It can be tr trolly, fun, can be serious, hardcore, whatever you guys want it to be. So again, just be sure to drop that in the comments down below if you want your deck to be featured this Friday um, or the next Friday. So question of the day which is your favorite elder dragon that we're seeing from strixhaven um honestly i kind of like the golgari one i think that's probably the stronger and golgari is kind of up in my alley in terms of color so i think i'm most excited for that one but i want to know what elder dragon you guys are most excited to play maybe it's for commander or i think they're more commander but eh, i could see someone trying to make it work in standard so yeah let me know down in the comments so uh mono red dwarves uh dwarves are getting kind of like a nice boost um might be more leaning towards boris dwarves um i didn't include that just because um it's a little bit harder to pull off right now we don't have that much support there's only really one boros dwarf that's good and we're not like super heavy on equipments um in terms of uh like utilizing them beyond embercleave so that's why i didn't do boros dwarves quite yet but i know that's a deck i want to play um as well when strixhaven comes out so let me show you what we're working with for right now so we got shock um, removes weak creatures damage space uh magda is a great card nice anthem effect to our dwarves and also ramps and we are playing one dragon to help us out we might play more uh when strixhaven comes out rimrock knight classic classic scorching dragon fire uh, seven dwarves uh got it gotta gotta represent the snow white card right uh solid card actually bearded axe uh, which is nice because um as long as we have a good chunk of dwarves and um an ember cleave out this will be giving a nice effect to one of our dwarves bone crusher giant just a solid red card all around and um it's probably a little bit more realistic to play um even in a dwarf deck so probably might be here to stay but if we're going to stay a little bit more true to the tribal deck this card of course would be replaced breakneck berserker is a common that we are using i actually really like this card three two haste um you know it's it works it works in this deck it you just want to punch in with this guy trying the vanix is actually a great card because we don't have trample here be on the ember cleave so it's actually a great way to kind of punch in make sure our opponent can't comfortably chump block uh torbrand um, is also a dwarf and uh, great in a red deck of course uh, terror of the peaks so that's our one dragon that we can potentially get with magda but honestly magda is there to spam just like a bunch of small things uh quickly uh four ember cleaves of course two shower skull smashing and i did get the ember this time around that is i think going to be necessary three dwarven mines only three because we're stuck with 11 mountains and i did want the flexibility of playing these two and we are not using fabled passage which kind of is a bummer but again we want to trigger the the dwarven mine so that we can um get a one one for kind of free essentially um it's okay turn one or turn four if we have the mountains it's not really good any other turn so that's why the fable passage can be a bit weird even if it does search for the mountain but um uh, for the most part oof this is rough there's no low drops I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this. I would love to keep it, but we're aggressive. We got to... Oh, man. And now we should have kept it, right? So mulligan twice. All right. This we have to keep. So double triumph of the annex is heading out. They'll probably keep this one. Um, yeah, triumph of annex, though, can go. Um... Well, we do have a Magda, but we don't have card draw, so we might just lose flat out to the randomizer. Uh, maybe I should have kept the other hand, the first hand, but I didn't feel comfortable um, keeping it, to be quite honest, so it was hard to say, honestly. So, we'll see. We'll see how we do. I'm not, like, super nervous by any means, so... Okay, we're... Um, pretty solid card. Gets a wall next turn. Um, this actually kind of worked out. 
Guess we get to punch in for three. And if we draw a land, actually, we would, an untapped land, we would be able to play the Embercleave pretty comfortably, which is pretty solid. Now imagine glass, oh, they're foretelling. Okay, they're giving us time. Um, so I'm actually going to play the Magda so that the wall cannot be chump blocked. Uh, well, it can, but the wall can't chump block beyond that. So I feel like this is a Doomscar incoming, which is going to suck, but you got to work with what you have. Um, yeah, I'm like 100% sure this is a Doomscar, but um, you do need to... Oh, it's actually... Es oh, it's Esper. It still could be a Doomscar. Um, so that was a nice addition to the uh, red deck. So uh, we'll see. Next turn, we can punch in. If it's not a Doomscar, we can punch in for a crazy amount of damage. Okay, I'm okay with the Heartless Act, honestly. That's fine. Um, yeah, this works. Do they counter this? They do not. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Ember Cleave. Okay, there's ah uh, they have a negate that's ah, so frustrating but all right we're in top deck mode um angel's actually fine uh yeah this still works um so i could trade with the angel this would be uh oh did we just win um go ahead and do this just in case i'm missing something we win with five cards in hand. Let's go. Let's go, team. Let's go, team. Only five cards needed. Mono red dwarfs. Easy peasy. Um, so it does function like a mono red deck, but you know it's a little bit harder to pull off. But there are other there are other rewards um, for playing a tribal esque deck. Um, so like the um, Magda came in huge. You know, destroying the wall, making sure they couldn't continuously chump block huge 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 moment so there are certain advantages that you lose um when you stick with mono red dwarves but there are, are significant gains as well i would say it's about even to be quite honest um i mean if you think about it we won with five cards in hand like that's that is crazy so um it just kind of all depends right it all depends i'm gonna keep this uh, it's risky but uh i still have plays that's important um the other one i technically didn't potentially have plays this one i still do have plays so um I, I mean honestly i would say at the end of the day the rewards are just so solid all around um that it's hard to like pass it up you know you know so yeah let's uh let's keep rolling um so i'm not gonna play the bearded axe um i would probably hmm so I feel like this is a removal spell, so I'm going to just attack, let them kill it, and then hard cast a Bone Crusher Giant. Might seem strange, but um, yeah. So there you go. Easy to predict, honestly, because um, it was just kind of written, you know, in their kind of uh, pause that they had a removal spell. They didn't do anything turn two either, so that's usually a sign of a removal spell, whether it's Bone Crusher Giant, Scorching Dragon Fire, something of the sort, right? So, Is it Giants? I have not played against Is it Giants in a while. That was one of the first few decks I played. I think it was technically the first deck I played when Keldon came out. Um, still love the deck. Maybe I'll give it another shot. Um, I'm trying to think if there are Giants in Strixhaven. I feel like there isn't. I haven't seen it to my knowledge, so. Um, so I'm going to pause because I'd rather play the Rimrock Knight um, as a creature. Um, okay. Yes. So that is happening. Hmm. 
Uh, this could be another Bone Crusher joint. That's slightly frustrating. So now I'm officially out of gas. Oh, I'm out of creatures. So I've drawn all my non-creature spells, which is slightly annoying. Which is part of the game, right? Um, and I do play in a... I do play that kind of variety. I'm not all in on creatures, I think. It's a mistake. But it's also hard to assume that the opponent's going to have two Bone Crusher Giants, right? Like, I never play into that. But maybe I should. Maybe I should start thinking that more often. So... Okay, so cast the Bone Crusher. Um, oh! Okay, that actually kind of worked out. So... I'm going to go ahead and just attack. If he doesn't want to block, that's actually fine. If he has a third Bone Crusher Giant, I mean, there's not much we can do about that. Like, what do you do against that, right? Oh, is this a shock? Oh, my God. This guy has the answer to everything. You know what? Sometimes we do too, though, right? Like, we, I mean, we, last game we won with five cards in hand. So, I guess balance must be restored before I cause a black hole with my luck. Sometimes I feel like I get more unlucky, but... Okay, decides to trade. I'm totally okay with that. Um, I feel like he lost more. A 4-3 is usually better than a 3-2 in most cases, so... Okay, that's not helpful. So I guess I can just play the beer guy. Um, okay, so yeah, we're running out of gas. Um... Triumph of Annex is only good when we have creatures on the board and we're in a pretty comfortable state. Neither is the case right now. So I'm just going to let the opponent attack. Nothing I can do. I'm going to take four. And this is where things start looking really bad for us. So if I don't draw a creature card next turn, I might just straight up lose. Just... Okay... Yeah, this is the part where I actually believe I would lose. I did not draw a creature card. The land is fine for the Embercleave, but at the end of the day, I would have preferred a creature card. Especially maybe one I could equip the Bearded Axe to, just to give it a little bit of a buff. But do they have a third Bone Crusher Giant? Is that what's happening? I feel like that's what's happening. Oh, okay, they're just doing Shark Tornado. That's fine. But they're doing draw spells, so... Good thing we held on to the shock, but nothing else really is going on here. But I believe this game is lost, so maybe I should just scoot. We'll see what their next play is. If it's a uh, Doom Quaker Giant or whatever, or Doom Quaker or whatever, Quaker. Okay, yep, we will scoop there. So that is a classic case of, you know the high risk high reward of this deck again bearded axe is probably going to go it's just too slow of an equipment it should honestly be played for two mana and then equip three like that would be more than fair i think instead of three three um yeah i mean it's an uncommon it's not meant to be like a superbly crazy good card but i think it would have been fine as a two mana equipment especially because you know especially if they're removing everything anyways Oh my goodness, what is this? I'm a turn behind. The randomizer does not like me today. I'm gonna mulligan, just... I'm gonna keep this. This sounds stupid, but... And I'm actually gonna get rid of that. Look, if we draw a land, life is good. That's all I'm saying. So, high risk, high reward, right? Come on, deck. I've got a great shot of drawing a land. Got a great shot of drawing a land. And I did not draw a land. Okay. Uh, GG. Oh, you know what? Let's give it one more turn. Let's give it one more turn. Just, just, let's do it for the humor. Let's, let's, let's do it for the humor. Okay. GG. So, <sighs> games like that. I mean, okay, here's the thing. Maybe I should have mulliganed to five because we did win a game with five lands in hand. So, five cards in hand. So, I guess I should have thought about that. But, games like that are and i talk about the randomizer a lot you know on this channel and with my friends and is it random or is it predestined where someone loses i mean i think it's random like you know don't don't worry about it don't like worry about games where you occasionally lose one especially since the um season reset you get two um, markers at the end of each victory so oh this is a great great uh hand uh, but the opponent's going first. This always seems to happen. It's like... 
I, I don't know. This is something I've noticed is like if I have a great hand, I'm definitely not going first. If I have um, a bad hand, I'm going second. Which like actually I feel like or a bad hand, I'm going first. Oh no! Why are you? <sighs> Why rune crab? Couldn't couldn't be. Could have been anything else. Could have been literally anything else. But it had to be a rune crab. Uh, we have to try. We have to try at the end of the day. We have to try and play this out. We have to play it. It's rough. It do be rough. It certainly do be rough. Okay, those are actually three cards that I would have not wanted to draw against rogues. So it's actually okay. It's actually okay. Um, Bone Crusher Giant would have helped, but I'm okay losing that. And the second beer Dax in a land, that's also fine. That actually kind of worked out, which is weird. And we did draw a Dwarven Mine, so that will be able to activate. So, seven Dwarves number two. If they have the counter spell, they're going to be tempted to use it now. Because this they will both be three threes. And that's going to be pretty tough for the opponent to deal with. So, I decided to go for the Heartless Act on the other one. Uh, this is actually fine because seven dwarves is not like it's a great card but it's not like a win condition so if they're going to use removal spells on those type of cards that's totally fine uh torbrand losing very painful that's a painful one um did we lose all our bone crusher that's actually kind of insane but you know that's okay Okay, so I'm going to try Magda this time. Because if they kill again or they counterspell, it's still a little bit in our favor. So didn't say please. All right, more milling happening. So this guy's more on the mill side. Um, I have to attack. Maybe he blocks. Doesn't block. Okay. So we're, we're trying to play patiently. We're trying to play as patiently as we can. The milling hurts. The milling is painful, but we just have to hold on. That's that's our goal. I would actually want to draw land next turn. Soaring Sot Thief. A little annoying. Not the worst. Not the best. Of one mind. Uh, okay, so this guy's copying CGB. So that's fine. Land. Okay. Actually, it worked. Imagine he wants to counter. Oh, oh, that was huge. Oh, um, there's two more, right? So, I guess it's gonna be the soaring thought thief. Tempting to shoot face, especially with another shock in hand, but this is a little bit more consistent. Um, I feel like this is the upswing of things, you know? Okay, so we lost all our Bone Crusher Giants. We're almost halfway to being milled. They kept on top, definitely concerning. This is fine, that's, oh, that's, oh. Oh. That, that was really good for us. Um, and we have Castle Ambreath. I feel like the Castle Ambreath is better then. I think we won, I think we just beat rogues, guys. Okay, so I castle Embreath here. We just won. We just won. We beat we beat CGB Rogues again. I feel like th this is weird. Whenever I play against decks that copy CGB, I tend to win. Like it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. I'm not saying I'm better than the CGB. Don't get me wrong. That oh, I'm so sorry. The dude is a genius. That guy thinks of creative ways to make meta decks even stronger. I'm just saying, I feel like I, I beat his decks a lot. Um, not, they're, they're, they're very good decks, but who knows? Maybe, maybe, it, maybe, maybe I'm just a little bit more creative. Maybe, maybe, just saying, just saying. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm so excited for Strixhaven Dwarves. I mean, we lost to what? Bad luck. <laughs> uh, so Mono Red Dwarves, Boros Dwarves, they're going to look super solid. So keep an eye out for it, you know. Don't craft your cards right away. We don't know what the meta is going to look like quite yet, but Mono Red Dwarves has honestly been pretty solid. 
uh, all around and yeah i think it's gonna even get better like it's kind of crazy thing about that it's gonna get even better but that's where we are so hope you guys enjoy that again be sure to drop an aether hub link of a deck you'd like to see me play for a fan submission friday um and get your deck featured on this channel so right now up top youtube is showing a video of my most recent upload and right below that is a video that youtube thinks you specifically like so go ahead check those out explore the channel really help me out uh watching my videos and you know help me on the road to get to 300 subscribers it's been a crazy journey so i'd really love to just get there and you know for those who've been supporting a long time appreciate it thank you all so much for watching i'll see you for your next nerd fail